If you're like I am, you're probably trying to save a little money these days by pumping your own gas. Every little bit helps, of course, but if you neglect that automatic check under the hood that you get at full service gas stations, you're not doing yourself or your car any favors. The problem is, at most self-service stations, all your time is just spent pumping gas. Most self-service nozzles like this don't work unless they're constantly squeezed. So, how do you pump your own gas and check your oil at the same time? Well, right here with this little gizmo. It's called a self-surfer. It's really a gas nozzle lever brace made by the Chris Company of Cincinnati. Here's how it works. You put the gas nozzle in your car's tank opening, squeeze the handle, and insert the brace. Gas pump nozzles have automatic shutoff devices that stop the flow when your car is full. When the nozzle stops, or when you've put in whatever amount you want, you take the self-server out and put it back in the glove box. Meanwhile, you've had time to check your oil or wash your windows. However, the self-server shouldn't be used while you're away from the car. You don't want to risk overflowing your fuel tank and wasting even more money. But here's the best part. The self-server costs under two bucks at Kmart's and other discount stores. And it's a real hand saver in the winter time when gas pump nozzles are usually steely cold to your gloveless hands. The self-server makes freezing Phillips a much warmer experience. But now, for a truly warm experience, let's hear from Joyce Braga. Joyce, what in the world is on your agenda today? Well, John, I think things are looking down. Are you depressed this week? <laughs> no, I'm not depressed. Okay. But I'll tell you what, it looks like downsizing fever has struck, and it's hit the vans this time. You mean it's that contagious? Well, I think so, and I think a lot of people are asking questions, like Greg Spence of McKee City, New Jersey. He wants to know when the manufacturers are coming out with a minivan. Well, what are we telling Greg? Well, he doesn't have very long to wait, because first off, Chrysler is going to introduce something called the Dodge, which is codenamed the T-115 minivan, in late 83. Now, if you take a look at this, this is what they're calling their garageable van. Mm -hmm. It's a front-wheel, 2.2-liter, four-cylinder engine, and it's based on that K-car chassis, about the same length, and you'll get a diesel option. But Joyce, uh, most people buy vans because they want to carry a lot of people or cargo. Are these small vans really going to be big enough? I think they will. They, the version we saw will handle seven passengers. Well, what about the other domestic automakers? Well, that's Ford and GM, and you're going to see them following suit about a year after Chrysler. They won't have a front-wheel drive. Now, if you remember when we were in Detroit, we saw the scaled-down version of the Ford, and it resembles their current club wagon. It has a kind of a wedge-shaped nose and rectangular headlamps, and it's about a foot shorter than their conventional vans now. You'll have a 2.5-liter engine and a diesel option. These really remind me of those futuristic uh, Ford Aero vans that we saw at car shows last year. Now, the GM news is just a little sketchy. They're rear drive, and like you can see from this picture, they're showing us four conventional doors, uh, no sliding panel. Well, we really don't know, but I think whatever happens, it's going to be very, very utilitarian. And in my mind, this is what's going to replace the family wagon. So far in all this discussion, we've heard nothing about the Japanese. Yeah, for once, they're not going to get the edge. The minivans are already very, very popular in Japan, but those import quotas are going to keep them over there until probably 1984. Interesting, Joyce. Keep us up to date on the new minivans. But now, we...